what's going on falcon fans welcome back to the pound for pound i'm jr clark and if you're new to this channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're a return visitor hey i appreciate it thank you for coming back and watching us and uh, as always we encourage you to like share and comment down below that's a, probably our favorite way to interact with y'all is uh through the comment sections i'd love to to know y'all's thoughts on our videos and uh i would like to always take this time to Thank y'all for showing your support uh, for me and Toby as we do this uh, every week. So we very much just, you know, uh, appreciate y'all's support. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, coming off the heels of that Jets preseason game, uh, all eyes have pretty much turned to the offensive line. Uh, they turned in a abysmal performance all the way across the board didn't necessarily um, open up holes for the run game uh, for sure enough did not protect Matt Ryan I think he was sacked three times before the half that is not what you want to see and you definitely don't want to see that in a uh, preseason game so that's something that they definitely have to get cleaned up uh, going into the season I mean you start the season with Minnesota and Philadelphia those are two extremely stout defenses. And if I'm not mistaken, because I don't remember the schedule, you know, um, like the back of my hand, but I think I heard somebody say within the first five games, you also get the Texans as well, who have a very stout defense. So getting this offensive line shored up is going to be an issue and a major concern going into the season. Uh, I was at the game Thursday night, so I couldn't watch it, like, in a sense, as closely as I could at the house as far as getting all the real good angles. But the one thing I did notice, and I'm sure a lot of y'all have noticed, uh, was that Mr. Ty Sombrello spent most of the uh, most of the game that he was in on his butt. Uh, he looked like a turnstile out there. Uh, apparently, he, he ha was having flashbacks of... Vic Beasley in 2016, I, I'm not sure what was going on. I know he played good for us going down the stretch at the end of last year, which is why you awarded him with the three-year $18 million contract. But so far in this preseason and a lot of the reports coming out of training camp from various outlets, whether it be the radio guys or uh, some of the beat writer guys, have said that he hasn't really been faring too well. Well, now he's injured. Now he has a uh, shoulder injury, which is something that plagued him in uh, Denver, you know, because he was a second round pick for Den, you know, for Denver back in 2015, and uh, we traded a fifth round pick to get him. Uh, but part of the reason why I think Denver let him go is because he was, you know, injury plagued the first few years he was with Denver. Uh, if you remember when we played him in 2016, and Vic had went off that day. Um, he was the backup. They put him in, and they were talking about he had just come off of torn pectoral surgery. So his shoulders have, you know, given him problems throughout his career so far. So that's uh, that's not encouraging to hear the fact that he went down with a shoulder injury um, from Thursday's game. So that brings me to the point of Gano, Matt Gano. He was an undrafted uh, rookie uh, last year, and he you know, spent time on the practice squad, and I think he made the 53 towards the end of the year. Um, but he's fighting for a roster spot this year, and he gets his chance. He gets his chance come Thursday to prove that he belongs on this roster. If nothing else, to prove that he belongs on this roster once uh, Caleb McGarry gets up and running which we got some good news about that this week. It sounds like he's starting to go through some individual drills. So that's real good to hear, real good to see, you know, those videos coming out of the branch of Caleb McGeary, you know, getting in some work, getting in some uh, practice, even if it is just individual stuff. Uh, that's a good sign. Maybe he can uh, get back into game shape, you know, sooner rather than later. But for this week, it turns uh, all eyes turn on Gano. And uh, and he's going to be running with the ones uh, Thursday night against the Redskins. So now it's his time. You know that that's all you can ask for, as especially as an undrafted rookie, is just to get a chance to prove yourself, right? 
Well, now his is his chance. Does he get in there and, you know, solidify that line? I mean, it's not unheard of for us to have a undrafted free agent at right tackle. I mean, that's what Ryan Schrader was, right? So with that being said, uh, I'm real interested to see if, if he can protect that side a little better than uh, Mr. Ty Sombrello was doing Thursday night. Now, I know it doesn't all fall on just his shoulders. It was a bad performance all the way around with the offensive line. And I've seen you know a lot of people saying that that has to do with the blitzing that Greg Williams was coming in with. And, and I agree. I mean, we don't game plan for nothing in the preseason. You know, you uh, – you just you go out there and you try to execute your plays and you're looking for who can beat their man, right? So with that being said, uh, the one thing that was disappointing is that I was really hoping that some of these other guys like Jamon Brown and Jake Matthews and and uh, Mac and all them would recognize those blitzes a little better and and pick them up a little easier. I saw that uh, I think it was PFF put out that. Uh, Jake Matthews was the was the worst graded offensive lineman. I I don't know from what I saw, it looked like a lot of pressure was coming from the right side of the line, whether it be this you know the center to Lindstrom to Sombrello. Um, that's why I don't put a ton of you know faith behind PFF. I mean they're they're okay stats, but you got a you got a couple any kind of analytics with watching the game because I've seen too many PFF grades that try to tell me. Uh, subpar players are actually league average, and I, I have a tough time with that. But that's just me. You know, I mean, I encourage y'all to get all the information you can get, whether it's PFF, whether it's Football Outsiders, whether it's uh, Pro Football Reference. I mean, there's there's tons of stats out there. So don't just hone in on one uh, particular website. You know, compare them all. Look at all the numbers because that's when you tend to try to get a, a better picture. And also, you know, that trumps the, you know, that doesn't trump the eye test, you know. I mean, if a player looks bad, he's probably bad, you know. And Thursday night, Tyson Brello looked bad. Lindstrom looked okay, but got uh, he got beat on a delayed blitz that he may not be used to seeing yet. So I'll give him a pass being that he's a rookie. And it seems like, you know, he's he's given up a few pressures on the on pass plays, but most of that, I think, is just him adjusting to the game speed. I think he'll be fine. At least I feel like he will be. But uh, so, like I said, you know, going into going into Thursday's game, we get to see what Gano looks like. I know a handful of fans have been clamoring to see. It's a good opportunity for him to try to make this 53-man roster, you know, like I said earlier. So I'd be real interested to see. That's what I'm watching for going into this game. And also hoping that uh, – it sounds like uh, James Carpenter's coming back. Uh, I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure if he's going to play in this game or not, but at least it sounds like he's practicing again. So that's good. You know, uh, we we brought him in to really be the left guard. Uh, Jamon Brown was getting his opportunities, and uh, but uh, you're really hoping that Carpenter was going to come in and solidify that and take that job. You know, but that's what I got today. You know, just just my observations on the offensive line and hoping that Gano responds to the uh, call. Um, if you're looking to, to chat with us, like I said, you know, put your comments down below in the comment section. You can hit us up on Twitter. I'm at uh, Grim1128. Uh, Toby D is at Toby1991. You can always find us there. Uh, you can hit us up on Instagram. It's pound for pound ATL. Uh, we're trying to get that started up there. And when we have more information about when the podcast drops, I'll let y'all know for sure where y'all can find that stuff at. And as always, Falcons fans, rise up.